Hey guys, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a Mosaic Damascus K-Bar Tribute Knife. Today I'll be showing the making of a K-Bar inspired knife with a Mosaic Damascus blade and twist Damascus fittings. Now, in a way, we're kind of jumping in midstream here. Uh, in a previous video, I showed the forging of uh, the bar of steel that's going to be used for this knife. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link to the first video uh, in the cards and descriptions. You can see the full process in the earlier video, but the basic idea is that a pattern's built into a simple Damascus billet, which is then restacked in a square to form a more complex pattern. That's then drawn out, sawed up on a bias, flipped over on its side, and re-welded to reveal the pattern in a sort of tile pattern on the face of the knife. Before we reveal the Damascus, though, we need to find that knife blade. Our model is the classic K-Bar knife used for a generation or so by the U.S. military. The final product here will be dimensioned a little differently from the military version, but it'll be easy enough to see the lineage of the knife. The making of the twist Damascus fittings were shown in an earlier video. Now this cross guard will seat where the blade meets the tang. So the first thing we're gonna do is mill out that little area so that the cross guard will seat nice and cleanly against the blade. First, I'll shape the base of the blade, the ricasso and the tang. I'm going to weld an extension on, so no need to make the entire tang. Befitting the custom nature of this build, in this case we're going a hair longer than the factory model. I'll mark out the general design that we're aiming for. Before we grind it to shape though, the K-Bar included a fuller, sometimes called a blood groove, on both sides of the blade. We'll mill that into the bar while it's still rectangular and therefore while it still seats cleanly in a vise. I'm using a half inch ball end mill indicating on the vise jaw so that I can just flip the bar over and use my digital readout to duplicate the fuller's location and size precisely on the other side of the blade. Here I'm cleaning up the fuller to get rid of all evidence of the milling. This involves quite a bit of elbow grease and a lot of little pieces of sandpaper. In order to make the handle assembly work, obviously I need a guard to fit the blade too. At various points in the video, we'll see the fittings in several different forms. Check the other video to see how we got from point to point. Obviously, since there's a whole other video covering the subject, I won't go through the making of the fittings in too much detail. But basically, I forge welded a billet of steel made from a high carbon steel along with 15 and 20 nickel steel, cut it, restacked it, twisted it, flattened it, and then cut a big chunk for the cross guard and a smaller, flatter piece for the pommel. The finished fittings were then etched and niter blued. Here are the resulting pieces, which will sandwich the handle. Hey guys, let me jump in real quickly to say that if you've enjoyed this or other knife builds on my channel, you can support the channel on Patreon. As with most of my builds, I'll have plans for this knife and its fittings with all the critical dimensions shown on my Patreon site. All my subscribers at any level have access to all the plans I've done over the years. So, link to Patreon in the cards and description. Alright, let's get back to work. Anyway, before I shape the blade, I'll perfect the joint between the cross guard and the blade. I showed the milling of this little shelf where the tang meets the fitting, but it comes off the mill one or two thousandths of an inch out of true. 
Now that doesn't sound like much, but it's painfully obvious there's a large visual gap here if it's not fixed. You have a little dark line running along there. So I'm hand filing it here using a filing guide. My file's been modified to include a safe side ground flat so that it just skates on the carbide, which otherwise would trash your file pretty quickly. This is very slow, tedious, frustrating work. Ultimately, I work down from mill files to hobby files to tiny scrapers in order to get this to mate correctly to the guard. It's at this point that I remember why I don't make many knives with cross guards. Just parenthetically, if you've been curious to know why really high-end custom knives seem to cost ridiculous amounts of money, this is it. I mean, it took me roughly three and a half hours to reduce that gap from a thousandth of an inch to relative imperceptibility. But anyway, there it is finally mating neatly with the guard. Now I'll shape the blade profile on the grinder. After the finicky business we've been through, this is refreshingly simple. We're starting to see the profile of the classic knife really feels like we're making some progress. There are a lot of ways to add a maker's mark to a blade. Etching, chiseling, stamping, hand engraving, electro etching, whatever. In this case, I'm going to engrave my name, but I'm going to use my CNC machine for the job. This is something that CNC machines excel at. I'm using a 20 thou ball end mill specifically intended for engraving. The way I do this is I just kind of flood the top of the steel with WD-40 so it acts as coolant and chip removal on a sort of micro level without screwing around with flood, coolant, mist, anything like that. Works great for engraving. And then we're on to creating the bevels, both for the cutting edge and the false edge of the clip point. This is reasonably demanding grinding, but not nearly as much of a pain as all that filing. The final job in roughing out the blade will be to weld a threaded extension on which will thread into the base of the pommel. Okay guys, so we're going to wrap up this video right here. I'm breaking the video into basically two parts. Now there's a little sting in the tail of the story of this knife, so you might want to hang around to the bitter end for that. Uh, you know, guys who follow me regularly know that it's not my standard playbook to chop up videos into a bunch of little slices. Uh, it just happens that this particular build took me a really long time. It was probably the most complicated um, custom knife that I've ever done. Uh, so it just made sense to, to kind of chop it up that way. Anyway, you'll have to watch to the second half of this video, which will come out in a day or two, to find out the tragic conclusion to this knife build. Uh, we'll put up links to that when it drops. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.